Whether you are going for a week or a month, this video has it all. We're going to be talking about mistakes not to make with planning, mistakes not to make when packing, as well as mistakes not to do while you're there. Today, this video is about mistakes not to make when you're going to Europe. I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and not only have I traveled extensively through all of Europe, I actually lived there for about six years. I lived in Austria, France, Italy, and England. So I have lots of ideas and tips to make your travels to Europe much easier and more seamless. Let's start with the planning. Number one is don't pack your itinerary too tightly. I know some people go to Europe only once in their life, but it is not a great idea to go see London, Paris, Rome, Madrid, all the cities in one trip. That's different cultures, different countries, different languages, and different food. My recommendation is try and stay in one country, and if you can, to actually stay in one region in a particular country. Dive a little deeper into the culture of that particular country, and your trip will feel more seamless will be easier on you. Plus, if you're trying to go to all of those places all over Europe in one small trip, you're gonna spend most of your time on planes, trains, and automobiles. The next mistake to avoid is going in August. Perhaps you have to go in August, but if possible, don't go. That's when all of Europe is on vacation. So prices are extremely high, restaurants are full, sites are full, as well as if you're visiting sort of smaller towns, a lot of them are actually closed the entire month of August. People aren't working, people aren't running their restaurants. So people in Europe are on vacation in August. So if you can avoid it, don't go that month of the year. Even if you're not going in high season, and one mistake to avoid is not checking out the major sites that you want to see long in advance and making plans to visit those. It is very important to see the things like the Eiffel Tower and the Colosseum. However, the best thing to do is book your tickets in advance and do sort of either sunrise or sunset or the off times. If you don't plan in advance, you're going to be there with all the other tourists, not going to be able to take a picture of you without having a thousand people there. So I do recommend planning those particular fancy famous sites long in advance. The next two planning mistakes are a little more about logistics. Number one is make copies of your passport, your credit cards, etc. Anything of value, your travel insurance, which we'll talk about in a minute, and email a copy of it to yourself. Just in case you get pickpocketed or lose your things, you will have a copy of all that emailed to yourself. The next one is also logistics and it's about money. Go ahead and call your bank and your credit cards and let them them know that you are traveling so they don't block you when you're traveling overseas. I also suggest using an ATM or a credit card that doesn't have foreign transaction fees. So check your credit card and your ATMs in advance. The last thing is, is I, when I'm traveling to Europe, I typically do not get cash in the United States because the exchange rates are terrible. That's a terrible mistake. Also, when I get to the airport, I don't go to the exchange kiosk where you can actually exchange money as well. That's another terrible mistake because the exchange rates are so high and the fees are so high. What I do do is I have my ATM cards open. Remember, I call my bank in advance and then I use my ATM card. Typically, it's the best exchange rates possible using your ATM card or using your credit cards to buy things. If you're enjoying this video, then make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment for your mistakes not to make when going to Europe so YouTube shares this video with other travelers travelers just like you. Let's go ahead and start with the packing. So number one, don't overpack and also don't bring gigantic suitcases and two or three of them. Most of the time you're going to be using public transportation, trains, planes, etc. It is extremely challenging to be traipsing through a big city or a little city, cobblestones, etc., with a gigantic suitcase getting it on and off a train, in and out of airports. It's just not worth it. Also, Europe, it has everything that you're going to need from shampoo, hair dryers, etc. There's no point in taking all of those extra what ifs. And if you're interested in seeing what mistakes not to make when you are packing for Europe, then make sure to check out my video. I put the information in the description below. So additionally with packing, okay, I consider this packing, it's also planning, and it is get good quality travel insurance and possibly medical evacuation. So I use Travelex and I use MedJet for medical evacuation. And again, I put both those in the description below. You know, it's not until you need it, 
that you need it and wish that you had it. Another packing mistake to avoid is not bringing the correct adapters. Do know that a couple of the European countries do not use those typical two-prong adapters. England doesn't, Malta doesn't, so something to know. Also, a couple of things that I always officially pack with me is my eSIM, which I use Olafly, and my VPN. While I was traveling to Europe, my Instagram got hot hacked and it took me two months to get it back. So I use Surfshark VPN and Olafly eSIM so I have all of my electronics things covered while I'm traveling. Now let's talk about mistakes to avoid while you're actually on your trip. Number one is not being willing to use public transportation. Not everywhere do they have Uber and also taxis can be extremely expensive. European system of public transportation, trains, buses, etc., is amazing and actually a lot of Europeans don't even have a car. It's kind of like in New York, you don't need a car. Or in San Francisco, you don't need a car. Public transportation is amazing so be willing to take public transportation. The next thing is do things with local guys. Guides. When you are searching for itineraries and things to do and day trips, etc., do check with the people that you are working with and make sure that they know what is going on and they have the inside scoop. Also, I recommend do not book your entire day full of, chock full of things to do. You are on vacation and you do want some downtime. Also, if you have some downtime, you might find there's something amazing that you didn't know existed before you arrived. And for me, I love love doing one thing during the day. I tend to spend a little bit more time. I love seeing one big thing, doing one big event during the day and leaving downtime every day to go adventure and explore an amazing city that I'm visiting. Another mistake to avoid is while you're eating. If you are in the heart of the tourist area and you're seeing a big tourist to come menu and you see all of the food in photographs, that's probably not the restaurant you want to go try. I would step off the main drag, maybe go down an alley or something like that and look for a local restaurant, one where there isn't the touristic menu with the pictures on the menu. You'd be amazed, just like one block off the main drag, what you can find amazing food at probably half the price as it is on the main drag. Since we're talking about food, another is the local customs as far as timing when they're eating. So perhaps in Spain, if you're used to eating at 5.30 in the afternoon, the restaurants aren't even open because Spaniards tend to eat at nine or 10 o'clock at night. Another thing to avoid and to pay attention to is tipping. You need to check which country you're in and what the process is and the customs are for tipping as well. As far as accommodation mistakes, things to avoid. If you're only gonna be in a city one or two days, perhaps you want to stay in a hotel and not an Airbnb because Airbnbs there's it's a little more cumbersome to get around find where you're staying get the keys understand how things work in the Airbnb like coffee makers and toilets and washers and dryers etc it's a different culture and a different country so things can be a little bit more challenging so if you're only gonna spend a couple of days then I recommend just staying in a hotel I do suggest staying in local hotels as well if you're a big brand and have lots of status on a particular hotel, that's great. But when you're traveling to Europe, do things that are a little more local, a little more intimate, and not stay in the big name brand things that you're used to. I'm a big Marriott girl, I love Marriott, but when I'm in Europe, I try and stay in more local hotels. The last three mistakes to avoid are all about what you're doing during the day. Number one, don't wear a sling bag or a bag that is very loose and not close to your body because there are pickpockets. You also don't wanna be carrying your phone like this because somebody will come by and swipe it from you. Not in every city, but it is possible. Number two, don't put all of your money in one place. Leave some of your money, some of your credit cards, and definitely your passport in your hotel in the safe. If something happens, you don't want everything in one location. And the final one is about shoes. I know we should have talked about this when packing, but you are going to be walking a ton when you are in Europe. I don't know what it is. Sometimes I walk 20,000 steps a day without even noticing. So you wanna make sure that you have comfortable shoes, you also have good quality walking shoes which are extremely important when you are traveling and finally be kind be generous be respectful of someone else from another country it's not supposed to be like where you're from wherever you are from you know learn a little bit about the language 
Learn hello, goodbye, thank you very much, and where is the toilet? Important things like that. You know, just be respectful of another culture and don't expect it to be just like yours. I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler. Make sure to check out this video about mistakes to avoid when packing for Europe. And I hope to see y'all in some amazing European city very, very soon. Take care, see y'all soon.